I'm making food. Uh, you got these two acceptors that have to grab hold to the hydrogen, uh, the hydrogen electrons are given off. And they, then they in turn use that to make ATP. I mentioned glycolysis, which is the breaking up in half of glucose. Because at one time, gly glucose was called glycose. Um, and when you do the breakdown, you're going to have to use up two ATPs, but you're going to make four. So you get, you're two ahead. Not a lot, but you're two ahead. And uh, there's the word glycose. I don't know what we, I don't know what we changed it for. Why not keep playing glycose, but we have called it glucose, and I don't know why. I thought it wasn't broke, why fix it? But they did. Okay. And then we talked about, um, about these two diagrams and how um, the ATP is, energizes this, and this splits into these two three carbons, and then this thing gives off a hydrogen, and then this becomes this, because this has one hydrogen more than he does. But in doing that, when you give the hydrogen off, and you enter two ATPs, and you get to make two. But if you look at both sides, I have made four and all. Two, two is used up. Four came off. I don't know which one I like best, this one or that one. And they're, they're both pretty decent. All right. And everything was identified but this, and so I wrote down here what PGAL stands for. I just say PGAL. But, but I know what it stands for. I didn't, you know, let that go over your head. Then we talked about um, respiration by happening in the mitochondria. We said that um, when glycolysis is finished, that pyruvic acid can be used again if you have oxygen. And if you have oxygen, then that goes to the mitochondria. Um, this, this acid goes to the mitochondria too. And then the ox oxygen is forced on the acid. And that just tears that acid all to pieces. And every time you tear it up, you release some energy. And Krebs cycle is one of those processes in respiration that gives energy. And the electron transport chain, that's the one that produces the most energy. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this one produces two. Just like, uh, this ain't no better glycolysis. This bad boy here, he'll make 34 ATPs. Right there is your winner. I don't even know what this is there for, frankly. I do know what it's there for. You gotta have a way, you gotta have somewhere to put those H's when you get rid of them. And this brings in the oxygen and you make your water, and you breathe out. So this is more designed to get rid of the H's and the C's and the O's than it is to make energy. This bad boy here is purely, like I said, the tennis ball down the stairway, that time it hits, it bounces a little higher. That's exactly how this thing works. And when it bounces higher, there's energy to make some more ATP. Uh, I told you here that, I showed you both sides, how they work, how they split in half. Um, 18 comes from one pruvic acid, 18 from another one, and that's your 36. If you count glycolysis with his two, then that one, that one glucose molecule can produce the many as 38 in all. Two from glycolysis. And then the other 30, um, 36 comes from using oxygen to finish breaking down the the pyruvate. Now remember, pyruvate is the same as pyruvic acid. So you know, that's, I just show you she's pyruvate. I, I'll say pyruvic acid sometimes I ain't think about doing it. And you're reading this going, what is it? It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Now, um, how far did we get last time? This is this new? Yeah. This okay, good. Okay, okay. Now if 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 you got it now, okay, glycolysis is over and you have two pyruvic acids from that one glucose. If you don't have oxygen, then fermentation is going to happen. Now there are two kinds of fermentation. There's one done by animals like us and our muscles. That's called lactic acid fermentation. And there's also one done by, by yeast and bacteria, and that's called alcohol fermentation. Now, if you're a brewer making beer and wine, you want the alcohol. And you're going to have certain yeast that, that will flavor your beer. So you like one beer or another one. But if you're a baker, 
You don't want the alcohol, you want the carbon dioxide. The bubbles make your bread rise. And you ever, you ever felt fresh bread, how soft it is? But that's the nature of that animal. So I got two fermentations going on here. But they have different outcomes and, and different industries use them. So if you're a baker, when you, when you cook that bread, you boil away the alcohol anyway. So you don't get drunk eating enough bread. And the bubbles that the yeast produce, you've seen the bubbles of the bread, right? Well, that's, that's what makes the bread rise. Because when you first make it, it just it ain't nothing to it. It'll rise right up and be nice and soft and moist. But now the ethanol, now, don't get ethanol and methanol confused. You don't drink methanol. Well, you do it one time, maybe. And <laughs> never again, because that's going to kill you. Ethanol is the one that makes you drunk. The problem is, though, this will also kill you in over amount because ethanol is a good way to destroy bacteria. It also destroys your brain cells, as you well know. A person who drinks at Christmas, maybe, or, or Thanksgiving, that's not too bad, but some folks drink every day. And before long, you start to see signs of it. Because the same alcohol that destroys that cell called a bacteria, or whatever, can also cause the cells called nerve cells. And matter of fact, we have seen some people who they've drunk so much and now they stop drinking and they still act like they're drunk. It's called alcohol psychosis. You've done so much damage to your brain, even now that you're sober, you don't recover. Terrible. Let me, let me check the road real fast because I don't know what I'm talking about. I should have done that. She'll be coming in a minute. Anyway, um, let's see. Both, both of these types of fermentation start with pyruvate. Now, if you have oxygen, these won't happen. They'll go the other direction. But without oxygen, and uh, there's, some, there's some yeast, if you give them oxygen, you'll kill them. They must operate no oxygen. I, I heard that we're going into space looking for life on these foreign planets. And we always look for water. We don't look for oxygen. Uh, because life doesn't depend on oxygen, it does depend on water. We have never seen any life forms, any life forms that can survive without water. So we find water, that's the first indication there might be life here. Even ice, that's water, right? So, but if we don't find any sign of water or no sign of ice, then we say, forget that planet, it won't, it won't happen. So just because you find no oxygen, don't mean that you need to stop looking because some yeast they don't need oxygen. They use something else. Of course, we got to have oxygen. All right. Now, I already tell you about this one. Some of these two, they, they, will, they can't handle oxygen. So they kill them. And we call them obligate anaerobes because they're obligated to have no oxygen. They must be, they must, you're not. You're obligate anaerobes. You can't live without oxygen. But if you're a poor bacterium, and oxygen will kill you because you must live in an environment where there's no oxygen. I would call you an obligate, you're obligated, and a road. So, and if you're if you're that way, you got to do fermentation because oxygen that you would use to do respiration will kill you. So fermentation is your only avenue. Thank God for the bakers like that and the, the brewers like that. They, these are not big things that they're all they're all microscopic. You don't see a tree that's an obligate anaerobe. To be small like that, you don't need much energy. Two would do it. Big as we are, we need more than two at a time. But oh single cell yeast, oh man, two ATP, that sucker's happy as a hog. You just move right along. So they're not big. And like I say, they still must have the ATP. To survive but glycolysis gives them enough they get nothing from fermentation nothing at all it's the way to remove particles and the waste products they remove is what we want they don't want that alcohol they don't want those carbon dioxide but we do so it's like they'll say about I'm gonna wash my garbage how the fuck they go one man's Garbage no man's treasure. treasure. Well, the garbage for the yeast is my treasure. I'm going to use it. So, fermentation, they're doing it because they got to get rid of what they have produced.
through glycolysis. But to get rid of it, oh man, I can use that. I can, use, I can make bread with it and make alcohol with it. And so that is what they're doing. Now, lactic acid fermentation happens in muscle cells of animals. Muscle cells of animals do lactic acid fermentation. You don't find those happening in, in yeast and bread. Um, oxygen is low. If, if you take off and you're going to run from here to Columbus Square, wherever, and you just get it, buddy, for a long, you got to stop. You just can't keep going. Now, if you kind of, a uh, long way is a little jog, because the, the more you expend, the more pr you produce. Lactic acid is going to be produced to give you just enough oxygen, enough energy to keep you running. But before long, though, you got, you got a house full of trash, and then you stop running. But you go, <sighs> you keep breathing. Because at that point, you get to use oxygen to go ahead and take rid of the acid. But if you're running real fast, all you're doing is just glycolysis, 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 glycolysis. And that keeps you going a little while. The more you run, the more you can utilize that, and the better you become. So what we're talking about here is like vigorous exercise or, or, or doing a sprint or whatever. That's when you're using just glycolysis. You don't have time to go through the mitochondria. I want, but at the expense, I'm making all this lactic acid. And your side starts to hurt, and your breathing gets ragged, and you just, you can't take another step. And you stop, you hit the wall, they say. But when you do stop, like you keep on breathing fast, because now that I'm not doing activity, I can use the oxygen to take rid of that trash I produce. Then you run again later on. But, you know, I'll tell you what, the folks who run a lot, their blood vessels get larger, the heart gets stronger, and they're, they, can, they can more easily cope with the lactic acid than the couch potato. And that's no swatters to it. I've only, I've only had, I was an army, I was a ranger, I only had two second wins in my life I can remember. But one of them I was running an off-road path at Fort Bragg. And we ran that because we thought it was fun. I guess it's stupid now. We jump logs and things, and and I was I was, and I found running down a hill for me is harder than an uphill. Down a hill you fall and bust your step. Up a hill you, you know you fall. But I was I was going up a hill, at the top of a hill, and I was almost ready to quit. And all of a sudden, like a new day dawns. Oh, man, and I took off running faster. I ran a long time. And I don't know yet to this day what happened inside me that gave you that second win. But those who have had it almost can never describe it. They know it's great. It's, a, it's the best high you ever going to have. And then some folks have never had a second win and they don't know what I'm talking about. And some folks, I, I see folks nodding, yeah, because you know. You can't put words on it, but it is so nice. Like the end of a PT test. You know, you're on your last lap. You'll be like, thank you, Jesus. Eight times running around that track. Yeah, yeah. Um, so glycolysis, not, nothing new in here now. There's nothing new. I believe in reteaching until it sinks in. Glycolysis uses, what's catalyzed me? Breakdown. Breakdown. What's the other one that means to build? Anabolism. Anabolism, like the anabolic steroids. They build muscle, right? You want to buy any catabolic steroids? <laughs> it would not work with I mean, you just, that would be defeat the whole purpose. So, catalyzes glucose into, now I, I gave both, I said pyruvate, which is also called pyruvic acid. acid. The end, now there's an enzyme that happens, the, the enzyme must make this go, as you all know, nothing happens in your body without an enzyme to kick it off. No, like, like pushing a kid on a swing, you gotta kick it off, and you're the enzyme. You ain't swinging, but you're the enzyme. Lactate dehydrogenase, and we just call it D, uh, LDH, that's what converts the pruvic acid to lactic acid. And by doing that, you get a little bit to ATPs. So that little yeast can live another hour. Okay, but when that happens though, when you, when you give off those ACEs to actually make the ATP, 
you're producing trash, you got to get rid of it. Well, the trash is going to be found in alcohol or it's going to be found in carbon dioxide. But actually, both of them make it. But in this case, you're making this, this lactate, which is coming from pruvic acid, and the lactate is what's going to make you stop running because you can't go any further. You just give out. And when you stop running and you keep on breathing real fast, just the oxygen, that's going to get rid of the lactate and you can again run again when you want to or whatever. Now how long take you to recover? Hours? Not really. I mean once I start running and it's not very long before I can maybe go again. What, what a good runner understands is their limitations. They know how fast they can run. When I, when I ran track, I thoroughly enjoyed pushing the leader. I didn't want to be the leader. I want to push the leader. I'm that last lap. He's been all this time beating me, right? He's been putting the power to it. Well, I have been too a little bit. And that last lap, I pull out around him and I kick it. He can't kick it. You know why? He's been kicking it. That's. And you find a lot of times your great track stars, they don't leave the race. They win at the end. They know how to do it. And I learned that myself. I guess the ones, someone's got to lead, of course. It's the ones who either, either know I can make it all the way, or the ones who don't know what they're doing. But I always like to lag about maybe one or two people behind. I always did that. And then toward the last lap, if I had anything left, then I'd kick it. But sometimes they kick it too. I'm like, oh crap. He ain't out of gas like I thought he was. It's all part of it. All right? Now, the lactate. This is what's cool. It can be recycled. It can be turned back into glucose and do it again. Because nothing really happened really to it. It's been broken down. Now, it's the liver that does the recycling. So when the lactate has been produced in your muscles and you're getting tired, you can't run anymore, if you have a good bloodstream, then the lactate is sent back to your liver. And in the liver, it is changed right back to glucose, sent back out to your blood, to your muscles, and it happens again so you keep on running. There comes a time though when the liver can't keep up. And now you don't have anything but lactic acid when you stop. Um, the process is called gluconeo. That means new formation of glucose. In the Bible, what's Genesis? Creation. Neo stands for new. Gluco must stand for. So the process that creates new glucose is gluconeogenesis. That's that. Makes perfect sense to me, think about it. And the Cori cycle, which I know nothing about, the Cori cycle is that cycle the liver does to take that lactate and do its work on it spit out glucose. That's pretty cool. Now there's a picture I found that kind of shows how those lactic acids are recycled. So let me show you. It all it starts here though. Glucose goes to your muscle. Okay? Glycolysis happens and you you gain your two ATPs, right? And then you have the, the pyruvate formed. And then that enzyme, that enzyme, LDH, comes in and just rearranges it and makes it become lactate. That's what makes you give out a gas. Now, the lactate can go back in your blood and be sent to the liver. And the lactate is then changed right back into pyruvate which is changed right back into glucose. But look here, right here. How many ATPs does it take to do that? Six. Are you gaining or losing? Four. No, I used up, I used up six and all. I gained two and I used up six. I'm down by four. That's why you can't keep running forever. 
If if this thing were two, I could run forever. Because I would be exactly break even with it. But see, let's say for example, I have let's say I have ten ATPs to my name right now. Ten ATPs, okay. Now, to make glucose happen, how many do I how many do I spend? Two. And then I'll get four. So I had ten. Now I got twelve, right? Now, now I got twelve. Now I've gained two. Now I send that lactate to the liver to change back to glucose. How much will it cost me to do that? Six. Six. Now go back. Now I had twelve. Now I have how many? Got a good deal and a bad deal. Actually, it's kind of a bad deal. <laughs> then it goes back to the muscle again. Now I have six left now. I use two of them. Alright, I get two more. Now I have eight, right? I then send it back to the liver. They're going to charge me six bucks. I got eight bucks. How much is left? Two. Then I go back around one more time. I use those last two. I make four. It's four enough to make it go in. Four, four, I need six. Four, we we'll have again. So that's when you stop running. Because you give you out of gas. And the healthier you are, the more to ATPs you have in circulation. Now if I'm a millionaire, I might be able to go for every one of them. But if I'm a pauper, and I only got 20, 10 bucks to start with, now if I have a thousand bucks, to go, I can run forever. And the ones you run a lot, they have a thousand dollars to start with. It's all because of the condition yourself. And this whole thing, like I say, if, if I could produce six, then I could just, I just keep on going there. But because you're going broke. You're going to go broke eventually if you keep doing this, right? That's when you must slow down and quit using and ma making so much of this stuff. And when you slow down, then you have time to actually do the process. So it's, it's a good deal. It's, a, it's an expensive deal, though. So, like I said, if I only start with 10, with 10 ATPs, $10. After three cycles, I can't afford to do it again. And then I stop running. And just, because then I can catch another one. That's why. But if you're a runner who runs all the time, you might start the race with 1,000 ATPs, and you go a long ways then. Well, I got, well, I run by, while you run by a guy who's walking, he's still running. He's out of gas. He might have been the pauper who didn't have enough to start with. So as you well know, preparation is better. Okay. Um, now, I've already discussed this. Let's talk about it again. When you, when you make all that lactate, you, you just have too much trash. Like I told you earlier, it takes six ATPs to go back around and make those two, right? Uh, I'm gonna take me, it's going to take me six ATPs to make a new glucose, to go back around and make two. I'm losing money. If, if it cost me six bucks to bake a cake, I'd sell it for two. How long can I stay in business? You know what I'm talking about. Now, if it cost me two bucks and I sell it for six, I'm better off. So this is not a nice thing. It's better than nothing though, all right? So it's not very efficient. So you give out, you have to stop. Your breathing remains fast and you have to walk it off. And you walk it off because you want the blood circulation to keep carrying oxygen so you can use that lactic acid up. Before long, your breathing slows down, everything becomes fine again. And then you start running if you want to. But it's all done because I, I know for me, you have to know yourself. In some races, you can't win because you mismanage your own energy. Now, the rapid breathing <sighs> while you walk, that's going to give you all the extra oxygen you need to take that proof rate to the mitochondria where you can just where you can make all that new ATP. When you're running real fast, you don't have time for the mitochondria. You're doing only glycolysis and you don't you're not making any headway. But when you stop running and you keep on breathing, then you get to send that proof rate to the mitochondria. But you don't get two ATPs, you get 36 of them suckers. 
then you can really be more efficient as you as you come back to, to normal everyday breathing. Um, the addition, the, the extra oxygen, all the systems are going to have a problem. Even when you run, even the lungs beating faster, even the lungs themselves have a problem. So, the, so it's not just your muscles that's gained. Everybody, when you kick it in high gear, every body system you have swings into action too. They're all doing this. Not just your muscles, but the muscles are doing it worse. All right? If you get a cramp when you run, the product is out there. <clears throat> so, and we call this the need to get rid of the lactic acid. We call it oxygen death. You owe back the oxygen that you're not been using while you're running. And then when you actually stop running and you keep breathing, you pay it back. Then you get to use that oxygen and then you do aerobic respiration, which is very, very efficient. And you you come back back and you're, you're fine and good to go. Still, when you get done, this lactate has been totally changed to water and carbon dioxide. There's no trash left. In the mitochondria, so there's nothing. There's no trash, but in lactic acid, there's a lot of trash left over. You're making your energy, yeah, but at the expense of making a, a dirty house. For long, you got to clean up. You got to pay back. All right. Alcohol fermentation is going to kick in next, and it's, alcohol now is not done by muscles. These are done by these single cell of the critters called yeast and bacteria. And, um, there's two kinds of fermentations. One of them is ethanol, also called alcohol. But you got to remember, there's more and more kind of alcohol. And the only one you can actually drink. Yeah. The other ones. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're doing this fermentation, you got to use this enzyme to make it go. PDC, pyruvate dicarboxylase. PDC. A lot easier to say PDC. And what this is going to do, now remember the other one, the other one, where'd it go? This one changed pyruvate to lactate, remember? Now, it even has lactate in the name. Because you're making that by adding water to this. Okay, so now the other one is the one that's called PDC, and you're using that to make the pyruvic acid turn into alcohol and carbon dioxide. Follow me? Now, you're getting both of these at one time now. With, with this fermentation, you're getting two things. You're getting alcohol, which the brewers want, and you're getting carbon dioxide, which the bakers want. And luckily, the bakers, because of the heat of baking the bread, the alcohol is burned away, and you you don't have alcohol to worry about. And in the um, the brewers, because you want the alcohol, you don't care about the carbon dioxide. That gas it bubbles away anyway. So and you know, <coughs> moonshine stills with a copper tube, how that work? As 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 you bubbled your brew, your mash, what would have been air with alcohol? What stayed behind was all the crap you're brewing, and then that long copper tube. You, you ever have your glass on the table get a water outside of it? How it condenses? Well, that tube through the air, inside that tube, the alcohol condenses back to the liquid and drip, drip, drip into the alcohol jug. That's moonshine they talk about. I went to school, I went to college in North Georgia and the mountains are there and I almost got shot one time and I was, I was out hunting actually. And it's this fun little trail. And the guy says, stop right there. <laughs> I had a gun. I'm wearing camouflage. He thought I was a revenue. But I was so young. And boy, I scared the crap out of him. I never knew where he was. He says, put your gun down. My first thing was, don't put my gun down. <laughs> I don't know where he is, so I just kind of laid him aside. He says, what the hell are you doing up here? But then I knew this guy was probably a landowner or maybe another hunter. I had to run his deer off. He's mad at me now. <laughs> and um, I said, I'm just, I'm just following this trail here. He says, you get a shot doing that kind of stuff, boy. 
I had never get his day that man. He stepped out of the woods. He had the old ugly gray beard, used to back his thing right here. He looked just like I got my deliverance. <laughs> it was and I saw him, he said, I guess you ain't the man, but you the on the trail. The man, the revenue. <laughs> but you're on the trail to my brood. By then I started realizing, oh my God, I done found the steel. They shoot folks again. And I said, I'm just, I go to North Georgia College there. I'm, I'm just hunting. I, 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 ain't, I ain't the man. I just, let me go. <laughs> <laughs> he said, uh, well, you can help me do something. So I helped him move a, a big old 55 gallon drum to a steel. <laughs> and he explained how the thing worked. And I said, you drink that too? He said, hell no, I don't drink it. I said, he won't drink his own brew. And um, he had the steel there, and he used the copper of a radiator. That's why he didn't drink it for it, because antifreeze will kill you. But he made that brew, and, and he had the fire going. At daytime, all you see is at nighttime, you, you had to cover, you had to cover the fire. But um, we got to be good friends. He took me trapping with him. He, he, he died. He got hit by a car. But um, I never get to, uh, his name was Luke. Scared me to death. And after I got no Luke, he would have shot me. He, he would have, if he thought. Because he's, he's backwoods, country, hillbilly. And tell you what, though, as a friend, you couldn't beat him. As an enemy, you couldn't beat him either, bro. <laughs> but when, I, but that time I do this teaching, I think about Luke and that steel, and how he explained it, and I said, um, I gotta go back now. <laughs> I didn't want to get the man to catch me the witch Luke and put throw me in jail too. So, cause you, you're guilty by association. I, even though I'm just innocent B, I'd be going to jail too probably. So, I think he knew that though. He said, Well, I'll take case that boy. You watch Moonshiners on TV? No, I don't watch that. I mean, I mean, I, I've only heard about it one time, but I've never taken down and watched it. Yeah. There's, a, there's some strange characters, though. Yeah. There's some yeah. unique characters. <laughs> All right. Now, in the case of the yeast, bakers want the carbon dioxide. That's why they make, make the bread rise and get the body. That's what they want. The brewers want the alcohol. Now, the same process gives you both of them. Now, there's, there's, not, there's not carbon dioxide fermentation, there's alcohol fermentation, and from that you get both products, carbon dioxide and alcohol. If you're a baker, you want the carbon dioxide half of it, because you know full well the alcohol being produced is going to boil away, so there's no problem. And if you're, if you're a brewer, well, you want the alcohol part, you know, full well the carbon dioxide is going to boil away and not be a part. So each industry uses the fermentation, but they're getting different results. Okay. Um, like I tell you here, alcohol, well, it's a good fuel too. They had, you know, had added to your gasoline. Burns really good. And it's the carbon dioxide that makes the bread go right as you probably know. I, I've never seen a cake fall, but I've heard of cakes falling when you're going to check your cake and you open the door too fast. You've never seen a cake fall? I don't cook cakes. No. I, I don't make cakes. I know I have it. My wife, I'm going to publish about my cakes. I never seen one fall. But I've heard that you open the door too fast, a, a, a pressure difference happens, and people cry now. I understand. I don't, does a falling cake not taste good? I would eat it anyway like a pancake. I wouldn't mad. <laughs> so it fell, I wouldn't care. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't throw it away. I, I never have eaten a cake that's fallen, but I'm thinking, can't be too bad. Put the ice on and make me a pancake cake. Okay. <laughs> There's a, I found this picture. Now, the one that Luke had was nowhere near that big. Those are, those are, Eight those of men, they have found that and they're about to destroy it. That's the moonshine steel, and those guys are revenuers. You don't find many moonshiners pose themselves with their dick. That's what's been found by the lock. And from their clothing, that's probably back there in Prohibition. 
You know when, when, when Al, Al Capone ran his bootlegging? And folks still drunk, but they bought the liquor on the black market. The bootleggers, and they made a lot of money. And of course, when you legalize it, then the bootleg money stopped. That's why some folks say legalize drugs, you'll stop all that crap, all the crime. But then a lot of folks drink, and that causes family problems, all kinds of stuff. I don't know what the solution is. But there's the moonshine still. That's another one. That one closely pretty. resembles one Luke had, but wasn't that pretty? Not at all. And all they have is you, you, you boil your brew in here, and there's, there's a fire under there. Steam goes up, clicks, and, and then it drops down in there. There's under here a catch basin, and drip, drip, drip is your alcohol. You know, they're still pretty much made like that. Huh? Like uh, on post at the group we grew up oh yeah, yeah, still yeah. Like okay, yeah. It's, it's a great process, no problem at all. And uh, this one you can buy. You know, you can make your own brew, right? Yeah. You can't sell. Legally. You just can't sell it. You can make it all day long for yourself. But when you sell it, and guess what's against the law? Selling it or not paying taxes? Not paying taxes. Not paying taxes. Not paying taxes. That's for the revenue. And per meter sir, get you. It ain't against law to brew the stuff. It is to sell it. And then not pay. Well, why do you want to pay your taxes? If I want to brew me a gallon and sell you, and I say, I'm going to give them 10 bucks, would they still arrest me? I wonder. I ain't got a business license. The, the, the brewer, the you know, Miller and Budweiser, they have license and they pay their taxes or they'd be also shut down. What are the legalities of that? If you're trying to make your own alcohol in a rental property, you could, like, say. Well, I, I don't you, know. I, I'm not in criminal justice. I just know. I know for a fact you can you can make your own brew. Matter of fact, this thing you can buy that on the internet. You can buy it on the internet. That you can buy it. You just can't you just can't sell your stuff. That was like building some chemistry experiment or something. Well, some folks like to drink moonshine. I've tasted moonshine before. I don't want no more of it. I'm not saying moonshine, but in general, it is terrible. I can't think of nothing as bad as moon. And the folks who drink it, I don't know what they drink it for. But anyway, this you can buy this. I don't know what it costs. Um, this how it basically works. Just an idea. Um, there's your mash, and you got your yeast inside there, and you got your furnace, and you boil, and the alcohol comes off the steam. Steam is up there, and this is water. If this water is cold, does that help or hurt the condensation? Help. It helps. So by being cold <coughs> now. It's still, it's still a gas, so it rises and moves down this way, and then drip, drip, drip. Now, this is your coil, and this is more water to keep it cold. And what's dripping out here is your alcohol. So if there was nothing coming out the other end there, and it was just to that individual thing, then there was... Oh, you mean right the here? Gas, the gas bubbles would just be trapped there, then, right? Well, this 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 not going. In, this just stops. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of steam in here too. But I just started the condensing process, and so you don't act. You don't need this stuff. That doesn't go all the way into the water. Though. It doesn't go into water. It I stops the bubble water. We did an experiment last semester in my chemistry class where I was trying to do something with that. Did for, you put yours in the water? For biofuel? Yeah, it was kind no. of like ghetto the way that no, we made it, it in no. class. You leave it out in the water. We're doing that. If you leave it out in the water, all this does is condenses. And now and this is still a thing. She told us she was about, talking it. about it. And, yeah. and I think we did something wrong because. It was getting closer to alcohol at one point because it was like 0.88 and alcohol is 0.79 and so it was obviously less dense in water but something yeah happened. this, this does this as you see alcohol, here and I was like, this is open tube that's the open tube wasn't sure what you did, huh? those open tubes and it stays in this this water is what makes it really condense i just didn't have enough time this semester to continue doing it yeah. you know? You gotta make some. You gotta make some moonshine. No, it was um, just making alcohol to combine with my fuel that I need. Okay. Okay. But that's how you do it, though. And you can use that if you put a wick in there. You can make a little lamp, and it'll it'll light your bathroom up. 
I guess you can buy a fragrance, put that lamp, and make it like you know a sweet smelling type of yeah. aroma. I know you when you buy the, the, the lantern fuel, just like this stuff here. But alcohol, those is flammable, so if you actually made it, it spilled it, gonna burn your house down. They can be recovered. But that is a that's a steel. You know what steel stands for? What's the word steel stand for? Distillation. That whole process is called distillation. And that's my distillation machine. I just say that's my steel. And that's how it came to be. Even though the folks who have no education, dumb as dirt, can do that. <laughs> I've seen that. What's that brace in the back that goes that. that slows down? What would that be? I'm not sure. Is that I more water that, or something? I think that's been like like an exhaust for the for the Oh, okay. You know, and so I don't I don't know what that does. Because you look over here, you don't see one there. Yeah. You don't see one there. So I don't know what that is for. I have no clue. I just nothing there's no level. So that's just to collect the 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 gases? All uh, you want to do is collect the gases coming up. See, actually this gas is steam. And steam comes, the alcohol comes up before the water does. You have 90 proof, 100 proof. That's my much water there too. Um, but fundamentally, it's, it's a simple process. It seems simple. Doing it though is yeah, easier said than done. Yeah. I know what you mean. But you can buy those things all day long. I mean, I don't want one in my house because because of inherent danger. Uh, the problem, I don't understand how to fire unless he sits on top of a, a fire. Yeah, they can build it up and then make so it. So it goes up and higher, doesn't it? Yeah. So, so it sits on a furnace, right? Just so the flames touch the gotcha. bottom. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. Like a little, like a little stove. Mm -hmm. okay. Anyway, now the next slides are about fermentation in great detail. But here's the problem. Fermentation itself did not make any ATPs. Who made the ATPs? What's that first process called? Glycolysis. He made the ATPs that fermentation gets credit for. So fermentation only makes one thing, carbon dioxide and alcohol, as a byproduct of the glycolysis. Okay? So, I, I, I thought about leaving that or changing that because I don't you think this does this? I might say, I should say maybe results in the production of and not make you think it's making it. Because this is not making anything except those two trash products that, that we want. But they do get, you know, like I said, it did take, it, it took two to start it. You're going to make four off of it, so I'm up by two that way. Okay, so if I had two dollars, to my name. Come on, Hugo. If I had two dollars to my name, I could then use those two bucks to make it happen. When I get done, I have four dollars. I'm up by two. That's, fermentation didn't do it. Fermentation is how it ended. Okay? Now, when you compare this to what happened in the mitochondria, there's no comparison. This will make 36 of those suckers. So when you take this respiration plus glycolysis, what's 2 plus 36? Well, that way that glucose can make 38 ATPs. The other way is that there's 2. So by th this is the way to go. This surely is the way to go. And if you're big like we are, or a tree, or a dog, or an elephant, you've got to use that way. You can't make ATPs, you don't. You're two at a time, they're going to do it for something that big. <clears throat> All right? And like I said, fermentation won't do it for a large crib. Only a small thing can survive making just two ATPs at a time. Small things, and you know that, tiny yields. All this stuff is kind of makes sense why nothing big can do fermentation. Because if you're big, you don't make enough money to pay for your life and your diet. <clears throat> this is showing you the formula. Uh, this is the words. 
this is the formula and I have the green stuff all the green stuff is about glycolysis and the black stuff is what happens with lactic acid fermentation let me walk you through if you read it <coughs> lactate fermentation uses the enzyme lactate LDH to change pyruvate into lactic acid and I tell you now I can go back to liver and at an expense of six ATPs change right back to glucose to again but you're losing ground okay so here's what happens <clears throat> greens all glycosis you take your glucose you split it by adding two ATPs when you do I want to have two three carboners and these two three carboners that's your proving but when I do it I'm making it you make four ATPs so I've gained my two right there that's a winning deal right there now these pyruvates can then be used here by your muscles if you're running so fast that you can't breathe that fast that pyruvate with this enzyme can be changed to lactate <clears throat> the lactate can be sent back to your liver to go through this process and make more what glucose, glucose. and then that can do it again and you're only good for a little while for long you can't run forever as you know you're going to stop eventually <clears throat> but this this is the glycolysis half of lactate fermentation and that's the actual fermentation part notice no ATPs no ATPs except here it's going to take six ATPs to make that sucker change back to glucose <coughs> I only made two. It's going to take six to make a change back. So that's why you eventually have to stop running. You just can't keep paying the bill because you're out of glucose. And then you, then you start breathing. You catch up. <coughs> Alcohol. Now, I have the same thing. Now, if you look at my two slides, I'm look at this slide here. This is the same as that. You know why, don't you? Because it's glycolysis. It's, it's, it's glycolysis. But then the difference is right here. <clears throat> this pyruvate with this enzyme produced, there's your alcohol and there's your carbon dioxide. Let me ask you a question then. What really de determines which way it goes? Lactic acid or fermentation or, or alcohol? What determines it? The enzyme. The enzyme. This what determines it. That's the terminal. If you have this, you're going to do lactic acid fermentation. If you have this, you're going to make alcohol and carbon dioxide. It is the enzyme. But I already told you all that. Enzymes drive all your reactions, not just these two, they drive all of them. Everything is driven by the enzyme. And that's the one that. <clears throat> and like I said, this industry uses the alcohol, the, the brewers, and the bakers use this. You ever smell donuts over here cooking? How good they, 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 how good they smell? Mm -hmm. They, they, you know, I, it, it makes you want to buy, buy one. When you, but you know, I'm a diabetic. I still I long for a good old donut. I probably, I'll eat one. I eat a dozen before I slow down. And that's get you in trouble. Now the next slides are going to be about the really nice one which is your aerobic respiration. This thing, it is the cream of the crop. It is the best way you ever, I ever thought of to get ATP. It makes so much of it. <clears throat> like I tell you now, if you have oxygen, then anaerobic respiration will not occur. That makes sense? If you have oxygen available, fermentation won't occur. Which would spoil faster, bread in the bag or bread out of the bag? But which one gets hard and no fun to eat? So what do you do? My mama used to freeze bread. 
She would go to the store. So we, we lived in the country, and she would buy like five loaves at a time and like four gallons of milk. And she'd freeze what she did. She'd freeze bread. Freeze milk, too? Yeah. And when she threw it, and she started out, I never saw, I never know scripture myself. I remember, I'm, I'm been hungry also. When you're hungry, you don't got fish like that. So she'd throw it out. I, I know it wasn't soft like fresh bread, but it wasn't hard like bread that's been laid out and turned like a, like a dry sponge. But Mama did that a whole lot. And I, you know, I was a boy. I didn't question Mama because she just, she used to cook. <clears throat> now, oxygen is going to let this happen. Okay? And because the oxygen is going to be your acceptor of electrons. If you have nowhere to put your electrons, you can't do this process. If you have oxygen, you know the, you know the things that come down the stairway I tell you about? Those are electrons. They come down and they bounce to oxygen. Well, if there's no oxygen, they won't come down. You do fermentation. But with the electron transport chain, as they drop down the stairway, at the very bottom, oxygen absorbs them. What what you breathe in for? So with oxygen, you can do all the other steps to make all that other ATP. Now, and the electrons that you free up is what goes down that electron transport chain. And oxygen is where they end up being. Do you breathe that oxygen? No. No. What you're going to do, you're going to break down that glucose and the oxygen, you're going to come out with carbon. With carbon. That's going to make what? And when you do the carbon dioxide. So you breathe that oxygen in a way but it's in a form of carbon dioxide, not oxygen. It just makes it run through your body. You don't, have, you don't actually use up the oxygen. You just use it to do something, and then you spit it out, but you breathe it out. Now, I, already, I think I already told you this one time. I'll tell you again, though. Glycolysis only happens one place in the cytoplasm. That means fermentation does, too. Because you can't go into mitochondria unless you got oxygen to go in with you. So if you don't have any oxygen, then out there in the cytoplasm, you just keep on going and you produce your alcohol from dioxide. Okay? Question. Does a yeast have mitochondria? Yeah. Let's say let's, let's say you're an obligate anaerobe. You're an obligate anaerobe. Oh. Why would you have mitochondria? You can't use them anyway, would you? Mm -hmm. See, if, if you're an obligate anaerobe, you say, well, I won't give you oxygen, it'll kill you. Why would you need mitochondria? That ain't how you do it. But now if you go either way, you would have some mitochondria. Because one day you might say, well, I think they all use oxygen. But if you're obligate and I can't give you oxygen, <laughs> why have mitochondria? They require oxygen. You follow my thinking? So it's no. Huh? So the answer is no. Not for obligate, because if you have if you have obligate anaerobe, can I give you oxygen? Yeah. No. If you have mitochondria, what makes those things work? Oxygen. So if I can't give you oxygen in the first place, why would you have mitochondria for? Can a blind man drive a car? No. Why do you cough with it? You don't have a need for it. If, if you're if you're obligate anaerobe, you're the blind man. You can't use oxygen. Why give you mitochondria? If you can't use oxygen, so you don't have any. But if you are a blind man with one eye bad sight, one eye no sight, maybe you could sometimes drive in your yard. So you might have a car then. So if you're if you're a type of a, of a single single seller and you can go both ways, you have some mitochondria because when you go the other way, you have mitochondria. And our bodies. They're full of mitochondria. Because we are the arrows. Okay? So, like I told you, now the glycolysis gains two ATPs. Respiration will gain 36 more. So that one glucose has the potential to make a grand total of 38. Two from glycolysis and 36 more by going through all the, the stair steps I'll show you later on make a grand total. That's a heck of a lot better than making two per glucose. That's 18 times more. 
than you would even need. <coughs> Actually, it might be down more. Consider it that way. Make sense so far? Now, this equation you see here summarizes aerobic respiration. <coughs> I start with one molecule of glucose. I gotta add six molecules. I gotta add 12 oxygens. You see 12 oxygens right there? What's two times six? I wanna take 12. <laughs> then I wanna take I, I, now when I do this, I'm gonna get rid of six waters and six carbon dioxide, but I get energy enough to make 38 of these bad boys. Now this includes glycolysis. That includes glycolysis. Now, how do I know six? Well, it's very simple. If, I'm gonna do some of my best. I'm gonna take them off. Just, I didn't plan to, okay. If I said that, that's wrong. What's wrong with that equation up there? Not balanced. They're not balanced. How many carbons are over here? Six. Well, if six go in, guess what? Six. They're going to come out. Mm -hmm. So i got to put a six right here, don't I? Mm -hmm. uh, so let's put a six right there. Put a six. Well, I fixed the carbons. But now look at the H's. What's wrong with them? That's two. That's two. Well, I have 12 going in. Two coming out. Two coming out. How many better come out? Twelve. Well, twelve better come out, right? So let's put a six right here in front of this one. Put a six right there. Now I just fixed the H's. Uh, o is still screwed up. <laughs> because here, I have, I have eight going in. And I have six. That's twelve. That's not eight, that's 12. Mm -hmm. Well, I wonder, if I've been using six twice, four, I wonder if six might work again. I'll put a six right there. Yes. I think that will solve the problem. Mm -hmm. So I'll put a six right there. Now, if you look at it, is everything equal? Um, how, many, how many carbons went in the process? Six. six. How many came out? Six. That's good. How many H's went in? Twelve. But what is six times two? I got six of these waters. I got two per water, right? That's twelve. Now look at my look at my O's. I have six there plus I got twelve more. That's eighteen, right? Mm -hmm. Now look over here. There's six of them plus twelve more is what? Eight balance. That's why I taught y'all balancing last last semester. So you know why these numbers gotta be there. Uh, you could take the six off and just say, and you could just say that oxygen and glucose will yield water and carbon dioxide. It'd be correct. But are you really right? No, because really it is one molecule of glucose with six molecules of oxygen will then give off six molecules of water and six molecules of carbon dioxide and a lot of energy enough to make 38 ATPs. That's how it really reads. So if you don't use the numbers, you're, you're really messing up. And I think I tell you, I'm using the numbers here. Six, okay, six molecules of oxygen will break down one molecule of glucose. The products, the waste products are gonna be six waters, six carbon dioxide, 38 ATPs. Does that make sense? That's how it works. It's really pretty simple. The more I say it, the more you go, well, that's not too difficult. Now, now next Monday you be going, oh, I, I thought I had it. Okay. Um, let's see how far I want to go further. Yeah, I want, this is new. That diagram out there, I added to the PowerPoint. You don't have that diagram. Mm -hmm. All you have is time. So I want I want to do 14 then stop since I can then come in and do the next one.
<coughs> I got 14A, B, and C. I have 14A. It all starts with glycolysis. That's why I began, because everything starts with glycolysis. Like fermentation did, but now you have oxygen, so you get to use further. That pro the pyruvate you made goes into mitochondria. And left side of that. Oxygen goes into mitochondria too. And there they're going to get together. And the oxygen is going to break apart, break all the catalyze that pyruvate, which is pyruvic acid, right? And when you do that, you're going to make tons of this stuff in water and carbon dioxide. Now, there's two processes going on inside the mitochondria to make it happen. One's called the Krebs cycle. I think the name is Albert Krebs who first realized this. I think it's Albert. Don't quote me. <coughs> but the man who first figured out the first product of the cycle is citric acid. So some folks call this a citric acid cycle. But I came along and called it the, the Krebs cycle because now Krebs, since he figured it out, we decided to name it for him. He didn't name it. We gave him the honor. So Krebs cycle is also called the citric acid cycle. Now the ETC, the electron transport chain, that's where you have phosphorylation. You know ADP? To make become ATP, what do you do to it? What do you add to it? That's called phosphorylation. If I have ADP, D means two. two. I want to make it ATP, I got to add a phosphate. And we call that phosphorylation. But to do that, I got to have energy. Because it takes energy to make that thing stick on there. But in doing that, I have then trapped the energy. It's kind of, I kind of tricked it. The ATP contains trapped energy that I can use to live. Now here's a mitochondria, and just one picture I found of many, many pictures. This thing resembles a bacterium. I, I, I told you all last semester, we think the mitochondria one time was a bacterium. They got inside and just took up residence, and since the cell said, hey, you can live here as long as you keep energy. He said, well, great, I'll live here as long as you keep step moist and dark and warm. So they're, they're symbiotic. They're, they get together. But the outer membrane, that was formed by the cell. The inner membrane was the one that the bacteria had. And inside here, this membrane, these are called cristae. Cristae. And it's in these membranes, it's actually in the membrane that respiration occurs. The more foes you have, the more powerful you are. The more wrinkles, the more surface area, right? Okay. Now, so, the, the, that this staircase I talked about, where they go bam, 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 is actually inside that membrane. A small staircase, obviously. And this is called the inner membrane. This is the matrix. This is the stuff inside the mitochondria. Now, here's your homework. Do for this class. Monday and Wednesday. Next class, lecture like this. That'd be what, Wednesday? Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday class. I don't have you on Monday, too. <laughs> so, um, oh, BNLC is my way of saying before next <laughs> lecture class. <laughs> Not lab, before next, and I'll use that to let you know. You know, email me, you can. I don't, I don't care how you do it. But I want you to go online and find me a picture. Now, this is a sketch. I want a real photograph picture. Oh, uh, okay. They Electron usually, microscope. Black and gray. Yeah, okay. You've seen them form other labs. Mm -hmm. I want you to find that picture, and when you do, add your line to it and say, here's the Christe. Okay. And, and I would suggest, don't waste the paper, email it to me. Okay. Open your, do you know how to do that? You, you might know how to do that. Don't I do that? Okay. If you can't do it, I'll show you how to do it real fast. 